Welcome to Millennium Daily News. This is Ifat Fatima with Top Stories. White House to send memo to Pentagon soon on transgender ban. Charlottesville violence, white supremacist Cantwell hands himself in. As Syria war tightens, US and Russia military hotlines humming. Dollar cities ahead of Jackson Hole meetings. And Megan Ray expects more federal magic at US Open. Those were the headlines, now the detail. The White House is expected to tell the Pentagon in coming days how to implement a ban on transgender people in the military. According to a memo that says the Defense Secretary may decide whether to remove service members based on their ability to deploy, a U.S. official said. The two-and-a-half-page White House document gives Defense Secretary Jim Mattis six months to fully implement the ban, according to a story first reported by the Wall Street Journal and confirmed by the official. It also directs the Defense Department to deny admittance to transgender individuals and to stop spending on medical treatment regimens for those currently serving, the journal reported, citing U.S. officials. A white supremacist wanted by police over his role in violent clashes at a rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, has handed himself in. Christopher Cantwell from New Hampshire faces charges of illegal tear gas use and malicious bodily injury. He appeared in a Vice News documentary about the 11 August demonstration. He has admitted pepper spraying a counter protester but says he did so in self-defense, according to U.S. media. Mr. Cantwell and dozens of others took part in a torch-lit parade through the University of Virginia shouting racist, anti-Semitic and neo-Nazi slogans. The far-right march had been organized to protest against the proposed removal of a statue of General Robert E. Lee who commanded the pro-slavery Confederate forces during the American Civil War. President Donald Trump has now explicitly condemned white supremacy groups, but virtually no one in the United States thinks his comments and behavior have actually discouraged any white supremacist groups. A mere 3% of American voters in a new Quinnipiac poll released recently said Trump's actions as president have discouraged white supremacists. Just more than a third of American voters, that is 35 percent, say Trump hasn't had an impact on white supremacist groups, and 6 in 10 voters, that is 59 percent, say he's encouraged them. A majority of that group says he's encouraged them deliberately rather than accidentally. It has been four months since U.S. President Donald Trump ordered cruise missile strikes against a Syrian airfield after an alleged chemical weapons attack. In June, the U.S. military shot down a Syrian fighter aircraft, the first U.S. downing of a manned jet since 1999, and also shot down two Iranian-made drones that threatened U.S.-led coalition forces. All the while, U.S. and Russian military officials have been regularly communicating, U.S. officials told Reuters. Some of the contacts are helping draw a line on the map that separates U.S. and Russian-backed forces, waging parallel campaigns on Syria's shrinking bat battlefields. Police have arrested a 22-year-old man in the southern Dutch province of Brabant. Hours after a rock concert was cancelled because of an alert from Spanish police. The man was detained in the early hours of Thursday as part of the inquiry into the terror threat, said police. The alarm centered on a gig involving U.S. ban and Allah Las due to perform in Rotterdam's Mesillo. A van containing gas canisters was found and its Spanish driver arrested. The reported tip-off from Spanish police came amid a heightened alert less than a week after the jihadist attacks in Barcelona and Cambrils in which 15 people died. We are now going for a short break. We will be right back with the headlines. Three point two million Taka Bridge collapsed in an hour. Prime Minister Ardis reached to stand beside flood victims in greater way. Bangladesh to celebrate Eid ul Adha on September 2. Food industry warns of Brexit workforce shortage.
ডেভেলপমেন্ট একটি স্বপ্নের ঠিকানা একটি সুন্দর আবাসস্থল ফ্রেন্ডস ডেভেলপমেন্ট আপনার স্বপ্নের বাস্তব রূপ দেয় নতুন ডুপ্লেক্স অ্যাপার্টমেন্ট কমার্শিয়াল বিল্ডিং নির্মাণের জন্য নির্ভরযোগ্য একটি প্রতিষ্ঠান ফ্রেন্ডস ডেভেলপমেন্ট অত্যাধুনিক ডিজাইন সর্বশেষ প্রযুক্তির সমন্বয় আমাদের কর্মতৎপর কনক্রিট সিমেন্ট আর ইস্পাতের মজবুত বন্ধনে গড়ে উঠুক আপনার বাড়ি রোদ বৃষ্টি সহ সকল বইটার বিরুদ্ধে করি সঠিক ট্রিটমেন্ট আপনার শহরের প্রাইম লোকেশনে রয়েছে আমাদের অ্যাপার্টমেন্ট আপনার কষ্টার্জিত টাকা এবং আমাদের নির্ভেজাল শ্রমে নির্মিত হোক আপনার স্বপ্নের বাড়িটি আপনার জীবন হোক সুন্দর এবং আনন্দময় আমাদের ঠিকানা ফ্রেন্ডস ডেভেলপমেন্ট দুই এক এক ইস্ট তেতাল্লিশ স্ট্রিট সুইট বি পাঁচশো সাত নিউ ইয়র্ক এন ওয়াই এক শূন্য শূন্য এক সাত ফোন সাত এক আট আট নয় তিন শূন্য দুই শূন্য ইমেল ফ্রেন্ডস ডেভেলপমেন্ট অ্যাট দ্য রেট অপটিমাম ডট নেট নিশাদ ট্রেডিং একটি আন্তর্জাতিক মানের গার্মেন্টস প্রোডাক্ট আমদানি ও রপ্তানিকারক প্রতিষ্ঠান ইউরোপ এশিয়া ও আমেরিকা সহ বিশ্বের নানা স্থানে বাইং মার্চেন্টাইজিং এবং ম্যানুফ্যাকচারিং করে থাকে সর্বাধুনিক প্রযুক্তিতে তৈরি বিভিন্ন ডিজাইনের পোশাক বাজারজাতকরণ এবং বিপণন এই প্রতিষ্ঠানের লক্ষ্য প্রতিষ্ঠানের বৈশিষ্ট্য উন্নতমান নিশ্চিতকরণ টেকসই পণ্যের নিশ্চয়তা নির্ধারিত সময়ে পণ্য সরবরাহ লেনদেনের স্বচ্ছতা ও বিশ্বস্ততা যোগাযোগের ঠিকানা ইউএসএ কর্পোরেট অফিস সতেরো সাতচল্লিশ থার্ড স্ট্রিট সুইট দুশো পনেরো জ্যাকসন হাইট নিউ ইয়র্ক এন ওয়াই এক এক তিন সাত দুই বাংলাদেশ কর্পোরেট অফিস বাড়ি নং একশো পঁয়তাল্লিশ সপ্তমতলা রোড নম্বর বারো ব্লক জি দক্ষিণ বনশ্রী খিলগাঁও ঢাকা এক দুই এক অথরিটি Convener of Kushia Conscious Citizen Committee Rafikul Alam Chuku said exemplary steps should be taken against those responsible for the collapse. We affirming that her government is very much active in tackling the ongoing flood. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina called upon the affluent section of society to come up in a bigger way with their support and assistance for the flood victims. I want those who are well off in society to stand beside the country's flood affected people she said while receiving checks of donations from various government and private organizations to her relief and welfare fund at her office mentioning that natural disaster is a regular phenomenon in the country Hasina said we all have to ahead braving these disasters Daughter of the public prosecutor was the Likokon of the sensational Narangan seven murder case where allegedly forced feed poison mixed sweet meat she was admitted to Dhaka Medical College Hospital Kokon said like any other day my daughter Maisha went to a nearby private coaching center when she was returning after finishing the day's classes a few people blocked her way and said your father did a great job in seven murder case have this sweet meat Maisha politely refused to eat anything from any unknown person then three people forcefully put something poisonous into her mouth and left the place quickly my daughter immediately called me over phone later she was admitted to Dhaka Medical College Hospital as she became ill the incident took place in front of a coaching center opposite Narangan club in the city Maisha is a A level student A government grand money giving ceremony has organized for the ex wild robbers and pirates of Sundarban who has surrendered to our honorable prime minister Sheikh Hasina Our Bagarhat correspondent Mahfuzur Rahman reports 
The auspicious ceremony was anchored by additional police super Inayat Hussain and senior police super Farzana Yasmin. The captain of Rep 6, Convergar Rafiqul Islam, was the chair. Honorable Home Minister Asadul Zaman Khan Kamal was present as a chief guest. A total of 132 pirates of 12 groups received such grant. In corporation of Exim Bank, each was given Taka 5000. On behalf of RAB, each was given a mobile set and eat products. Our Prime Minister has given Taka 1 lakh. In the ceremony, speech was delivered by members of the parliament, Narayan Chandra Chanda, Tipu Munshi, Dr. Muzammal Hussain, Talukdar Abdul Khalek, Mir Shaukat Ali Badshah, and members of the reserve seat for women in the parliament, Happy Boral. Special speech has delivered by Inspector General A.K.M. Shahidul Haq and Managing Director of RAB upon the overall important tasks of police and the RAB, especially on removal of terrorism, impediment of drugs, etc. Dhaka North and South City Corporations promise to remove the waste of sacrificial animals within 36 hours. Officials of the two city corporations came up with the assurance at a meeting about waste management of Idul Adha arranged by the Information Ministry at its conference room, said a handout reports the UNB. They said necessary preparations have been taken by both Taka North and South City Corporations to remove the wests at the quickest possible time. If sacrificial animals are slaughtered at the spots fixed by the city corporations, then it will be possible to remove the wests within 36 hours, they told the seminar. In Taka North City Corporation, five slaughtering spots have been fixed for each ward while there are 625 slaughtering spots in Dhaka South City Corporation, said the representatives of DNCC and DSCC. Holy Idul Adha, one of the biggest religious festivals of Muslims, will be celebrated across Bangladesh on 2 September, as the new moon of the Arabic month of Jil Hajj was sighted in Bangladesh sky on 23 August. The National Moon Sighting Committee took the decision at a meeting after reviewing reports on moon sighting received from different parts of the country. Saudi Arabia's High Judicial Court has announced that based on confirmed sightings of the new moon crescent, the first day of the Eid al-Adha Muslim festival will be Friday, September 1, 2017. The Chief Election Commissioner K. M. Nurul Huda said the army will be deployed in the next national polls if the Election Commission feels the necessity for it. Although all political parties have their observations, army will be deployed in the next national polls if the Election Commission feels it necessary, he told reporters after a discussion program at Kapashia in the district. We want all political parties' participation in the general election and we will ensure free and fair polls if every party takes part in the polls, he added. Viewers, now Millennium Business News. European companies are being told by their advisors to open up and engage more with existing shareholders to fend off the increasing threat from activist investors who force strategy changes to push up a target's share price. Activist investors are mostly hedge funds managing tens of billions of dollars of capital. The largest ones are from the U.S. and having had success in North America and benefiting from a stronger dollar. They are flush with cash and looking for opportunities further up. According to J.P. Morgan, activist investors have launched 119 com campaigns in Europe in the 12 months to June 2017, compared to 100 a year earlier and 62 five years ago. The dollar steadied after another politically driven slide against the euro and yen, helped by nerves over what message Federal Reserve policymakers will send during meetings in Jackson Hole starting later in the city. The dollar's 14% decline against the euro this year has come courtesy of a collapse in expectations for tax cuts and other pro-growth moves by the Trump administration that weakened the case for further rises in Fed interest rates. But the U.S. central bank remains the only of the world's big monetary authorities to have begun raising rates and it is also seeking to rationalize the huge stores of securities it has built while pumping cash into the economy in past eight years. The UK food industry has warned that a Brexit workforce shortage could leave a third of its businesses on 
viable. The Food and Drink Federation said our sector faces a rapidly approaching workforce shortage and skills gap. In a survey of the farm to fork supply chain, almost half of all businesses surveyed said EU nationals working in the UK were considering leaving. It said that 31% of them have already seen EU workers leave the country. The Federation is calling on the UK government to guarantee the rights of nationals from across the European economic area. New Balance has won a record payout in a Chinese trademark case after three local shoemakers were found to have infringed the brand's N logo. A Chinese court awarded the U.S. sportswear for more than 10 million yuan. Lawyers believe it to be the highest award to a foreign company in a trademark dispute in China. The country has been tightening its laws to tackle the widespread problem of trademark abuse. A court in the city of Suzhou, west of Shanghai, handed down a ruling last week against three defendants for infringing the American apparel maker's iconic trademark and the deceptive promotion of their products. Viewers, the Millennium Environment Science and Technology News. A rare mammal has been discovered living in Western Australia, decades after it was thought to have been wiped out of the region. The distinctive black-footed tree rat was spotted by chance last year on a seasonal monitoring trip when a researcher went on nighttime stroll. Months of camera footage have now confirmed its existence. Researchers said they cracked a bottle of campaign to celebrate its return after a 30-year absence. The native rat has telltale black feet and a long black and white tail. Weighing up to 800 grams, it's considered enormous compared to its more common relatives such as the golden-backed tree rat at around 200 grams. French yachtsman Alain the Bolt wants to turn a boat design he used to break a world speed sailing record in 2009 into a clean, fast taxi service for the waterways of major cities. The sea bubble won the backing of private investors. The Bolt expects to raise between 50 to 100 million euros by the end of September. Emmanuel Macron France's pro business president who wants to create a startup nation, even championed the idea when he was economy minister. His office did not respond to requests for a comment about whether he still backed the project. Sea Bubbles faces specific regulatory hurdles, not least trying to convince Parisian authorities to raise the speed limit of the river scene. Brazil's government has abolished a vast national reserve in the Amazon to open up the area to mining. The area covering 46,000 square kilometers straddles the northern states of Amapa and Pera and is thought to be rich in gold and other minerals. The government said nine conservation and indigenous land areas within it would continue to be legally protected, but activists have voiced concern that these areas could be badly compromised. A decree from President Michel Temer abolished a protected area known as the National Reserve of Copper and Associates. Its size is larger than Denmark and about 30% of it will be open to mining. Viewers now Millennium Sports News. American great John McEnroe expects Roger Federer's sensational comeback season to continue in New York when the U.S. Open kicks off on Monday. Since returning from a six-month hiatus in January, the 36-year-old Swiss has been in stupendous form as he was on five titles including the Australian Open and Wimbledon. At the moment, we are just assuming that Roger is going to pull the rabbit out of the hat again. Four times he was Open champion, 
McEnroe said during an ESPN conference call on Lately. If Roger wins this, it will be one of the great stories in that last 50 years or ever, he said. Bangladesh tour of the West Indies scheduled for February next year is likely to be pushed to July. A change, if any, will be necessitated by the World Cup qualifiers scheduled for next March. West Indies currently ranked 9th in ODIs are likely to feature in the tournament. ESPN Crick Info has learned that both the BCB and Cricket West Indies have tentatively agreed to the change. It is understood that after the qualifiers, West Indies will host Sri Lanka in June followed by the series against Bangladesh a month later before wrapping up the home season with the Caribbean Premier League. Former England captain Wayne Rooney announced his retirement from international football on 23 August, ending a 14-year career in which he became the country's top goal scorer with 53 goals. Rooney earned his first cap against Australia in 23 at the age of 17 years and 111 days to become the youngest player at the time to represent the national side. He also leaves an England's most capped outfield player with 119 appearances. Before ending, the headlines are once again. White House to send memo to Pentagon soon on transgender ban. Charlottesville violence, white supremacist Cantwell hands himself in. As Syria war tightens, US and Russia military hotlines humming. Dollar cities ahead of Jackson Hole meetings. And Megan Ray expects more federal magic at US Open. This is all for now from Millennium Daily Newsroom. To get any kind of news, please log in to facebook.com slash millenniumtvusa and youtube.com slash millenniumtvusa. Besides, to get the most updated news, please visit to our website www.millenniumtv.net. Stay with Millennium. Allah Hafiz.